Hello, I'm Leo from Poli Bicycle Company. Uh, I will tell you about bike geometry and uh, how it has been developing since uh, 1990s to 2015. We have two bikes here. Uh, the other one uh, represents uh, a more traditional way to approach uh, mountain biking. Uh, this kind of concept with 26 inch tires and a uh, steep head angle, uh, relatively long uh, stem and short top tube and reach uh, has been very common for, for many years. Also short chain stay is uh, quite common with traditional uh, mountain bikes. Uh, a very usual way to make the geometry as well is uh, to have uh, slack, uh, slack uh, seat tube, and that's how we can get more more top tube length for the bike. And here we have a modern geometry. This is polar tile. Uh, and as we can see, we have relatively long wheelbase, uh, slack head angle, and quite steep seat tube angle. Also, we have quite long uh, chain stay length. Uh, usually, and also, of course, we have a very short uh, stem for us for cross country bike. Uh, usually people think that long wheelbase uh, doesn't make the bike turn easy or, or it will handle a uh, uh, little bit hard and it's not easy to ride. And also with slack head angle usually is uh, uh, thought that it is for more or less for downhill bikes. I will show you some examples how these things can be uh, seen a little bit differently. So I will uh, make a few rounds here. This, this space is quite small. As you can see, uh, uh, some, something like one and a half bike length uh, radius here in our show, showroom. And I will start with, with the old fashioned bike. So, what we have here is quite long distance from the seat to the handlebar. As you can see, I have a quite uh, forward going position here. And uh, also, uh, what I have here is, is when, when I stand up, quite a short reach. So, uh, the distance from the BB to the handlebar is still quite short, even though we have very long stem. And uh, as for demonstration, I will give you an example of how, how it will perform when I try to make a short turn. So I'm, I want to turn like this, as you can see my knees on the handlebar and then my other arm is straight. So this, uh, this turn is not very common, but as we can see, I can turn it in small space. When I go, when I stand up and try to do the same, it's a little bit more tricky thing to do. And one thing as well, which I can demonstrate is, when I turn the, the handlebars like this, and then, then try to pedal forward, I don't press any brakes. This bike won't go anywhere. It wants to go straight. So keep this up in mind when I take the other one. Okay, now we have a long, long bike which should be very hard to handle in small spaces. Okay, when we go on the bike, I have 
quite good reach. Uh, uh, from the top view when I'm seated, and then when I stand up, my stance is quite quite good. I can turn the same without any problems. My balance is really good, and also. Uh, even though I have a quite uh, wide handlebars, I still, I still can tell quite easily. And then from standing up, I can do the same thing because I can uh, use my weight differently. The ba balance between the axles is better. And the last feature, like I showed earlier, when I start to pedal. I don't do anything, it's like, I, I just want to keep it straight, so now the bike is going round when I start to pedal. This feature is very important when, when, when you want to make a flatland turn, which has uh, like a small rocks, like ball bearings, and you want to turn on flatlands. So the bike doesn't understeer and also if you don't want the bike to oversteer then we need to have uh, longer uh, chase day length and that also helps climbing really steep ascents. Uh, I hope this explains how modern bicycle geometry works. The same geometry can be applied to even city bikes to uh, enduro bikes.